All right, welcome to today's CES meeting. The topic is carryover from last week. We've promised to discuss uh, transitive immutability records and tuples this week, continuing a conversation we've had in previous meetings. Uh, Daniel, would you like to lead the conversation? Yes, uh, I'm very happy that we're spending time on this topic. I apologize that I don't have a, a more coherent presentation prepared, but uh, we uh, we were we had some interesting discussion recently in the record and tuple monthly meeting about about this as well, and so there there's a question about um, about this deep immutability versus what Mark previously described as shallow immutability, or what I would describe as deep immutability with a uh, with an escape hatch, which is from a formal perspective equivalent, from, a, from an expressivity perspective equivalent, but from an ergonomic perspective, it's quite different because the deep immutability by default encourages more correct code. Even if there's, in some sense, it could contain references to objects. So from, from our investigation so far in records and tuples, it seems like references to objects from within a mostly immutable data structure especially for example, references to functions, <clears throat> but also maybe references to, I don't know, DOM nodes or ver various different things is quite important. And so this is why we were proposing that it be included in the, the initial version of records and tuples. We're proposing that this be through a box primitive or, or if records and tuples or identity list objects in a box identity list object that uh, that has this unbox method on its wrapper prototype to get the, the contents out. So uh, before we talk about how it connects to realms, I wanna talk briefly about do people, how do people feel about this concept of these explicit boxes for these mostly deeply immutable data structures together with, as we agreed on before, that there's a, a predicate that you can call to check, does this nested primitive record or tuple contain a box that you can use to decide whether it's necessary to continue recursing in on these things. So I, I have a new concern uh, that, that, that uh, goes directly to this issue. Uh, and it came from um, my doing some maintenance work on some of our own code, um, uh, the, the, um, the algorithm of Harden. And then I realized that a tremendous amount of existing code, uh, both for me and from other people, that does recursive processing of structures does something uh, like, um, is this value primitive? Uh, if so, just let it through without further processing and otherwise recur into it. Um, uh, so, you know, for example, my, my Harden implementation, which was the thing that triggered the thought, um, well, primitives are already hardened. They're already um, uh, uh, transitively immutable uh, and um, not tied to a realm. So just let them let them through with no further examination, uh, and then anything else recur into them. And likewise, my membrane implementation uh, uh, lets lets primitives through. And there's two ways that historically I've I've written the primitive check. Um, one is uh, does a, a capital object of foo uh, triple equal foo? Uh, if it's primitive, then uh, coercing it to an object creates a wrapper, which is not triple equal to itself. Um, and um, I'm sorry, uh, is, is it object uh, is of, of um, no, actually the, 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 the triple equal is fine here because if it's primitive, then it won't be triple equal. If it is an object or a function, then it will be triple equal. Um, and uh, the other thing that I've done that's more common and more encouraged by performance considerations is, uh, is type of the thing either object or function and is the thing itself not null? Uh, and that's also a very common way of checking as primitive. And I realized that if records and tuples are transitively immutable and 
as primitive values, they're associated with new, new type of names, uh, then all of the, that code still works. If records and tuples are either shallowly immutable, which I had been advocating, or deeply immutable with a, with a object escape hatch like box, then all of that old code breaks. None of that old code is correct across yeah. that transition. All of it needs to be revised before it's correct again. And a lot of that code right. is library code that's trying to operate at a meta level with regard to other code. Um, whereas uh, if the escape hatch is symbols as weak map keys, which is where we originally started, then all of that old code still works correctly and you have your escape hatch. Uh, that's slight, it's a somewhat more awkward escape hatch, but it meets all of the hard constraints and it doesn't break that old library code that's trying to uh, recur and transform things. So I, I think this is a relatively superficial issue. I think this would be addressed for example, by making the type of the object. It's not, I, when I say superficial, I mean, it's not a deep issue like whether things are uh, shallowly or deeply immutable. This is an issue about a particular compatibility with a particular coding pattern that we might want to preserve. And I think that there's a very, there are a number of local fixes like using identityless objects that just comprehensively solves this issue. It makes it so that these would always show up as objects by either of those two checks. And, um, and then you could have more advanced code, which has a more subtle treatment of records and tuples. So having them be objects is not a minor change. Uh, from... Yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not that minor, but there are just a couple different little places where it's observed. I, I, when I say superficial, I mean in comparison to the other issue about how boxes are accessed across realms and how this relates to this kind of uh, realm-wide weak map concern that you'd raised before, which I see as more of a deep concern. But you know, at some at some point, you know, these these things are all kind of whether it's a primitive or an identityless object. These these things are isomorphic to each other. They're just a couple places in the language where it surfaces, and they come with different mental models. But that's more about education than about uh, than about what's going on and what's expressible. So the the issue of old code being I mean, this is I mean this is something that until I was until I had the aha this last week uh, doing maintenance of my own old code. Uh, I didn't really appreciate this, but uh, but in general in TC39, the issue of uh, of not breaking old deployed library code that that's a constraint on um, on you know what we what changes to the language we can make uh, has you know that has been a forceful constraint. I mean the the yeah, not I have. So I have proposed a solution. I'm proposing a solution. The solution is identityless objects. Okay. Uh, do you see any problems with that solution? Uh, I have to ha wrap my head around it. It's not where my head has been. My head is my head has been on records and tuples as primitive values. I, I just have not been spending time thinking about them as as objects. So uh, we could either object. dig into that potential solution, or we could go on to the realm interaction of records and tuples. I don't have an opinion on how we spend our time. But so, we're, we're halfway through, so yeah. With identityless objects, the main concern that I have, having written similar similar traversals in the past, is if they can be stored in weak maps or not. Because when I see type of object, I shove things in weak maps, um, and if that starts erroring, it's probably okay. Um, if it silently leaks, that's probably not okay. I don't have a good solution here. I think if it errors, that's still, I mean, that means there's a tremendous amount of old, you know, old code that's operating at this meta level that just suddenly starts breaking when it encounters new object graphs. So, so yes, records and tuples, but... I, 
there's a limit to how much we can accommodate old code. Old code can assume that there's a fixed set of typos and assume fairly directly that records and tuples don't exist. And that will be a false assumption. So I think we should, I think we should orient our discussion more towards, towards things that we really expect to come up and that we value. We're making value judgments when we talk so, about compatibility. So I have a bit of a different perspective. Um, I actually think erroring is fine uh, in general, uh, at least at a glance. Uh, in order for your library, safe. what? It's, it's just, it certainly fails safe. Failing safe is better than doing the wrong thing silently. Um, yes, and it requires you to pass a new code path in general to these libraries. And so whenever you provide stuff in JavaScript, essentially invalid arguments, um, it can blow up. Uh, most libraries do not write code robust enough to survive you uh, passing very exotic things in. Uh, in this case, I consider adding new type of the same kind of exotic and Likewise, I consider identity list objects the same kind of exotic. We would still need some kind of check, does this object have identity, um, which would be new, but it is a potential escape hatch. Yeah, it, it has the virtue that even though it would break, even though over time, the, the old code may be introduced to patterns of new usage, the day that the feature's unlocked, nothing's broken because nobody's constructing records or tuples. Yes, in both cases of identity list and type of. Um, ah. So the, the, my concern about type of is that um, uh, over time, we've grown the type of strings for primitives we have not grown the type of strings for objects. So what Daniel suggested, which is that it's type of object, um, if, it's, if we want old code to consider them to be objects is fine. Um, uh, if we, uh, for something that's, that should be considered an object, I would, I think that uh, to have the type of string be anything other than object or function uh, would break too much old code. Um, uh, to have, uh, if records and tuples are primitives, to have the type ofs be new primitive strings. Well, we've already expanded the primitive string type ofs twice, um, once with symbols and once with big ints. Uh, and also because there's more of them, uh, code that tries to distinguish objects versus primitives are generally checking against, um, you know, the strings, object and function versus everything else. Mark, the reason that I say that uh, identity list objects is a superficial change is because if you look at the, the observable places that it changes versus being a primitive, there are just two places. One place is the type of uh, becoming object instead of record or tuple. And the other place is the, uh, the wrappers, that the wrapper of one of these values is itself. So that's, the that's it. There's so the no... Let, let's talk about the wrapper thing because the as a primitive, a primitive is not tied to a realm. A primitive does not inherit from a prototype. Uh, rather, when you dereference a primitive, when you say primitive dot, then the, the realm of the code with the dot in it determines what prototype the property is looked up in. Um, now, if records and tuples are identityless objects, um, does the record itself inherit from something or the, you know, the tuple itself, does it inherit from something? So, so I think it's important that records and tuples are realm independent. So I think the get prototype of method of, of the records and tuples would get the record or tuple prototype from the current realm, just as if it were a primitive. Well, that's, that's a, that's a huge change for the for something to be type of object, but for its prototype, its apparent prototype to be relevant to the code that's 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 dereferencing it. Well, proxies are allowed to do it. No, they're not. They can have get prototype of change change based on what they're 
what's going on. They can't, it can't change based on the realm of the code invoking the proxy. The proxy cannot sense the realm of the code invoking the proxy. Oh, I guess that's true. Um, that's dynamic scoping. I mean, that's, 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 that, that's, that's, well, the, that's the big taboo. Well, because this all gets so complicated, I kind of would prefer for them to be new primitive types, but then it causes this other problem. I, I still really do think that this is quite a superficial problem. There's, there's not many moving parts to it. It's really about this one surface check, these couple different surface checks that you, that you have with type of or wrappers. So I suppose we don't have to agree on whether or not it's superficial. We can have different subjective weightings of the sizes of things as long as we're agreed on the, on the uh, you know, technical attributes. Uh, yeah. Um, the, um, the idea that these things are type of object and to be considered to be a special kind of object is just something I'll need to wrap my head around before I can have a strong opinion. Just one question to make sure I understood at the beginning. Um, if recurrent tuples are primitives and are deeply immutable, can only contain other primitives, there is no problem, right? That's correct. It's only it's only so if they contain something uh, like a box that has uh, that is a primitive but uh, can hold an object directly, uh, or if they are identically less objects that there is a uh, that there is a problem. Right. Or that's or the concern. No, that's the concern that Mark is raising, but other people have raised other reasons why they prefer identityless objects. For example, Mozilla has repeatedly said they prefer identityless objects because primitives are complicated. However, when we went over the equality semantics recently, they realized that their implementation strategy with no different operator behavior or anything was just not going to work. And so I think they're reconsidering that. But there have been several different reasons. You know, Peter has argued that it would be complicated to break programmers' mental model with new kinds of primitives. I think the identityless objects version did not satisfy his concerns. Uh, I don't fully understand why yet, but I guess he's not here today, so we can follow up about that another day. And um, so, yeah, there, there are several reasons why we looked into this design. Uh, the, this one that Mark is raising is just another, another new reason why we might consider it. Okay. So what kind of intuitions are, are relevant here? Um, what, what do we want people to think about the distinction between primitive and object? And does that correspond with the results of type of, or is it a separate concept? So I, I think we could frame this perhaps in a different way that would better address the workflow that we're trying to talk about or design pattern. Um, it really comes down to, do we want people to, uh, in general, traverse these things? Um, I think the answer is yes for records and tuples. Um, do we want Great. them to traverse is the discussion of Mark's uh, older code that may uh, not handle things. Um, I think if you can't traverse things to get to mutable state via something like box, it's a uh, usability issue. Um, and these two are just intention. Um, so that comes down to traversal. I think just by nature of them being nested has to be one of the goals. And usability wise, not having box makes uh, people start having side tables. And I've done that a lot personally. Mm -hmm. um, it's not fun, but it does have some use cases that can't be done with box. I don't recommend it unless you want to spend a lot of time working with it. Yeah. Well, I. So I, I personally don't think that traversal should be coupled to the cons to either of these concepts, to object versus primitive, or to uh, the output of type of. If if we were, for instance, to introduce a a complex type, 
to ECMAScript. That is, you know, a, a, a number with an imaginary part and a real part. Uh, I think that would be a primitive, and I think that you would be able to access the parts independently. So the, my concern about the traversal is um, uh, that there's a lot of old code where if it sees type of that these things are type of objects, object, it will traverse into them, which is fine. And if it mm -hmm. sees, it's, if it if it sees from the type of that it seems to be a primitive, that it's not an object or a function. Um, uh, then it won't traverse them, and not traversing them uh, is uh, is fine in the case where they're comp composite, uh, which includes complex, mm -hmm. as long as they're transitively primitive. Uh, the The problem case is uh, if they're not traversed and they're not transitively primitive, then we have a really bad problem. Right, I, and I think I I think I agree with both aspects of that. Okay. It, it, I think it would we've be laid pretty out. Much, Sorry. It would be pretty much the equivalent of a JSON string, uh, and knowing that you can actually parse that string to get JSON out of it. That's my mental model as yeah for why a primitive works. Right. It can have structure, but there's no. It, it, it's an isolated subgraph. So I think we understand this problem space. We haven't come to a conclusion, but we've improved everyone's understanding, I mean, including mine, of the constraints here. And uh, so I want to go on to the other part, which is how Box interacts with multiple realms. So one model is basically to say that the Box, basically there, there are two possible models. Either the Box just, just references the object directly or the box references an object and it's only accessible within a particular realm. So the second one is more constrained. Uh, and there are some reasons why I was imagining that we might go along these lines. Uh, at this point, I'm now kind of leaning back towards the first one. So there, there are two different realm cases to think of. Uh, basically, the the case that corresponds to um, same origin iframes today, and the case that corresponds to um, the callable boundaries uh, realms are, proposal. Are boxes, in the case where records and tuples are considered primitives but and have boxes in them, are boxes, yeah. are, are, is the box itself considered primitive or object? I think it would be the same thing. I think the definition of equality it would be the same thing as what records and tuples are. Box, the definition of equality on boxes is, you know, based on comparing what the box contains. Okay. So, um, uh, I yeah. think that's where we got into a difference in record and tuple, uh, just by nature of these uh, wrapped functions. I have concerns about treating. Uh, box as a primitive of component uh, identity because when you pass a function across uh, at least the realm barrier right now, you get a wrapped form. And so when you round trip, you get a new function back. But if you box it, you get the original function back. Right, um, right. I so, no, a good solution to this, but it's just a concern. So I, I see two solutions, uh, but I was I wanted to lay out the, the options before we get into the thing that that Bradley sure. explained because I'm not sure how how intelligible that was. So just to uh, so I was I was imagining that we could sort of go all out here and say yeah you know a box can be this kind of foreign pointer that you could pass into another uh, realm even if that realm is you know, in a different agent or across this callable boundary, and then you could pass it back. And this would be a cool capability. Uh, Bradley, I think, convinced me that, you know, this is really overkill. I think what we could do for the callable boundaries or different agent case is say, if it contains a box, you know, you just can't pass it to that thing. Then there's also the case of where it is the same agent. Uh, and in that case, I think 
the, the conclusion that I came to ultimately was, well, then sure, it's a box and you can go and unbox it in the same, you know, in the in the cross or in the in the same origin iframe case. The other alternative would be that we handle these in kind of a, a more uniform way, where we say that in both cases, the the box cannot be unboxed unless you're coming from the same realm. So you could imagine it like the, the box has an internal slot, which is the realm that it was created in. And when calling the unbox method, that compares the realm of creation with the, with the realm of the wrapper method. Uh, and this could work kind of symmetrically in the same, in the same versus different case. Uh, we could even go kind of all out and say, well, uh, if we are, if we're in another um, realm, but the thing inside is callable, then we'll put like a callable boundary around it. But anyway, it would have this difference with the with the function identity. I, another I, thing, I, sorry, I, I, yeah, I want, to, I want to raise a caution here against dynamic scoping, uh, caller or, or or put it more generally, caller sensitivity, um, uh, and it it. Um, uh, in general, an invoked object, as we were talking about with proxies, an invoked object cannot cannot have a behavior that's sensitive to who it's in, who is invoking it. Um, uh, well, this would be in the context of box being a primitive and having a different wrapper in each realm. Okay. So then the wrapper would close over which realm it's thinking of. Okay. So this it would it, okay. Yeah, Mark, this one would not be different from trying to do something on, on, an, on an object, maybe <clears throat> with a built-in that uh, for, for some reason doesn't operate on, on the renal object and try to explain myself here, but I, I see this behavior be, being fine. Um, is the box itself, the, 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 the box built-in methods will be on the realm and they they have uh, certain capabilities is kind of trying to operate on a, a date, date, date object, uh, proxy on a date object that you're trying to use through the date uh, built-in method or something like that, something equivalent to that. The, the, feels to me that it's fine. So, so let me just, it's, um, uh, dates themselves can't sense the realm they're being invoked from, but the date, but the date built-ins, um, no, the date, date built, so I, I'm not, I'm not, dates yeah. are, I, I'm not getting the comparison with date. I think this no, analogy makes more around. sense than that. A, a this is, this is a high level analogy, analogy as if the proxy forms another realm rather than thinking about actual realm things. I'm not understanding. No, I was saying just that uh, an object who is wrapped, a, uh, an object like a date wrapped into a proxy and trying to call it with the built in methods that are using in some internal slots. It will fail. So for me, it's very equivalent to that rather than the Yanami scoping. The, the, the analogy is at a high level. I think we should go on from this. Um, I want to wrap up the kind of conclusions on this topic uh, because we're coming to the end of the, the meeting. Um, so it sounds like there's this kind of broad understanding of the, the high level need for, for box of having this deeply immutable with an escape hatch. We do have this problem to solve of how it should, how we should maintain compatibility with, uh, with membrane systems that assume that primitives don't have anything that's, uh, that's an object inside of them if they follow some of the existing primitive checks and it's not clear whether uh, identityless objects is a workable solution for, for other reasons, but we, we have this common understanding of the, of the problem space. Second, on the, the realm uh, interaction of box, it sounds like there would be pretty significant cost to, to being fancy like I was imagining. 
and we should instead just say that boxes don't have anything to do with realms. Like these are just shallowly immutable objects and uh, you cannot pass the anything that contains a box to, you know, uh, a callable boundary realm or a, or, or like a, a worker or, you know, something in a different agent, you instead have to, but, but you can pass them to the same origin iframes and they can be unboxed with no particular restrictions. If that is, that is all saying, if we work out the previous issue, this is how we would imagine that boxes would work. So is Daniel, this... when you say when you say that you can pass it to the same, um, or you know, uh, uh, say or in um, iframe or something like that, you, you mean using post message? No, I mean using property access. Property access, okay. Or just like calling a function in that that same word. Passing that. Iframe. Yeah. And you uh, you will be able to unbox there. Yeah. So it's basically that I was wondering if boxes should like contain their realm and it sounds like they shouldn't, that that would just create extra complexity and not solve any particular problems. And the real problem that we need to solve is this, uh, is this issue about maintaining compatibility with these membrane systems and their primitive checks and the assumptions they make when they see that something is a primitive. Is, it, is this an accurate summary of what we've discussed? Uh, I, uh... So I don't feel like I I'm I have enough clarity to to endorse one side of this controversy over the other. I I, I feel okay. Like, Sorry uh, for jumping so fast. So uh, I, mean, I, I think I think as you know, stating the positions uh, and stating the rationales for the positions is very valuable. I'm glad you you done that. Uh, I don't have a conclusion about um, you know which of these positions uh, I you know I favor. Um, but I'm I'm glad to you know to 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 you know be gaining clarity about this. Uh, the other thing I want to raise here is that if records and tuples are identity-free objects rather than primitives, then the case for box, which has always seemed weak to me, um, uh, the case for box seems weaker. Uh, if records and tuples are already objects, then if they're just shallowly immutable and they make a transition to other objects that have identity with no box in the way, uh, I don't see what value, what the, what the added value is of introducing a box boundary if records and tuples are already objects. I continue to disagree. I tried to explain the motivation for box. The motivation for box does not relate to whether we call this a primitive or an identityless object. It's about being deeply immutable by default and shallowly and and having an escape hatch, which would lead lend itself to completely different usage patterns from something which is not deeply immutable by default. I think we should pick this up at a, at a future meeting because this seems to be like a standing disagreement between us, and I would really like to to work it out. Yeah, uh, Daniel. Uh, in terms of uh, your initial question, I I'm sympathetic with the idea of not allowing uh, passing records and tuples if they have any box inside um, through the boundary. I feel that that's probably safer, and and then we can work out the details from there. But they, similar to Mark, I still need to think more about this. Okay, so no solid conclusions. And the next steps will be in some future week, we just come back to the same topic after everyone's thought about it more and we continue discussing. So, so th thank you so much for your time and attention. This is really helpful. And thank you, Daniel, for bringing the conversation in to stick the landing at 11. Um, I'm gonna stop the recording, thank you. <laughs>